Hello, and welcome to Mortals and Portals, a Pathfinder Real Play podcast. I am your host and GM, Zach, and joining me at the table is... Adam, I play Jules and Azar Keti Bod. Joel, and I play uh, Dax, a kobold rogue. Ryan, or Ryu, a Magus tiefling. Taryn, and I play Waltz, a human champion. All right, well, last time on Mortals and Portals, the gang finally arrived in Karos and were immediately taken to the healer, Toriel, who started patching up their wounds and asking a lot of questions, such as, why is Dax missing a tail? Why is Ryu blind? Why does Waltz have a brand on his neck? And why does Jules have so many cool tattoos? So we got a little insight on your guys' backstories. He didn't reveal too much, of course. And uh, she patched you up. And you guys were also getting the sense that throughout the town, people were a little bit uh, wary of your existence because Digsby was running around telling absolutely everyone that would listen that you guys killed some Drake Knights. So some people were excited by your presence. Some people were wary. But you can tell that the Drake Knights have a heavy influence over Karos. So you went to the tavern, started learning some information from, not Benjam, the mouth breather guy, (laughs) but you did learn some information from the tavern keep, uh, Kelleen and Poppy. And then you started to find out what is going on in Nisserine. So you learned that there is a spell that seems to be causing artificial climates throughout the island, creating three distinct regions, which is Enoch, which is the one you're currently in, which is unaffected by the magic and has regular seasons. Gainmar, which is a desert region, and Pagos, which is a winterized Arctic, you know, wasteland. And essentially, Karos's whole job is to make food and support the Drake Knights, who are running the island with an iron fist. Unfortunately, you couldn't get any insight on the source of this magic, how it works, why it's here, but you did hear a reference to someone named Dunadast, who is a Venara, which is a uh, primate-type humanoid who seems to know more about it, and you guys were treated to a good meal, given some free ale and some rooms for the night, and you guys bunked up. You forgot my amazing song that I played. Oh, yeah, and Jules played. Do I have to say the entire session from start to finish? It yeah, it was a know. Nat 20 song. It was a Nat 20. It's worth mentioning. Oh, yeah. wait, yeah, it was a Nat 20 song. <laughs> it was, And then yeah. Jules played a song that literally made people cry, even though that wasn't the intention of the song because it was talking about <laughs> a brutal fight and people talking. <laughs> and was literally the most beautiful a song could be. Nat yeah. Absolutely. T. Good luck writing a song for that, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, impossible. <laughs> so yeah, you guys got a good night's rest. Uh, you had to share some rooms, I think. Uh, we have Jules reluctantly hanging out with Digsby all night, and we have Dax, Ryu, and Waltz all bunk it up. So yeah, you guys got a good night's sleep, and it's morning, and now you are awaking. So I'll turn it over to you guys. Waltz will say, uh, hey, Dax, I was uh, kind of thinking, you know, it seems some of these people uh, maybe probably fear the Drake Knights. If um, if Digsby was telling everybody that we're the ones who killed them, do you maybe think that could lead to any problems? I mean, that's kind of what I was trying to figure out with these guys. It seems like that might not be good information for everybody to know. I feel like that might bring some heat on them, even if it come, doesn't come back to us, even if we get out of here soon. Then, I mean, either way, the Drake Knights are going to be ticked off when they get here. Yeah, I mean, I was already uh, sentenced to execution once. I'm sure we'll get out of it again somehow. Right. Uh, you did it before. I think you can do it again. You seem capable. Yeah, no, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Don't don't you worry, Dax. Walt, you were sentenced to death? Yeah, sure was. It was the story you told back at Toriel's true then. Oh, yeah, I know. It was definitely true. We didn't uh, get hardly any food after a pretty hard battle. I noticed some officers were eating a pretty good feast, and I just kind of took some for my fellas, and uh, yeah, they didn't like that. But to be fair, uh, I didn't uh, get along with this one officer too much, so he took the uh, opportunity to have me sentenced to death, and I thought, you know, I could, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't blame him. He didn't like me, so uh, that was a pretty good opportunity. But yeah, luckily I knew the executioner pretty well. We're actually from the same city, so uh, he let me go. You seem pretty relaxed about it. Oh, well, I'm I'm here anyway, so uh, yeah, I guess I there's like no that. reason to be there's no reason to be uh, upset about it. It all worked out, you know, as most things do. Sure, sure. No, I I, I like that. I think this world could use a, f- a few more people that think like that. Now that you talk about that, it kind of does sound similar to what's going on here, right? All these people making all the food are starving, but the Drake Knights are getting all the food they could want. You know that. Uh, 
yeah, it didn't hit me till right about now, but uh, it does seem kind of tyrannical like that, and uh, maybe there's something we could do to help these people out. Definitely. What do you say we go save uh, Jules from, from Digsby? He's got to be having a rough night. Yeah, there's no way he got any sleep. Uh, Jules, you wake up to the crunch of an apple. <sighs> oh, good. You're awake. Morning, Digsby. You seem to have fallen asleep last night while I was talking to you. It's sort of rude, but I understand. I'm surprised I fell asleep at all. Did did you sleep? Oh, no. Not a wink. I'm so excited. Uh, perhaps you should calm down. D- uh, Digsby, I've, I've been thinking. Uh, I certainly appreciate how much you've enjoyed your time with us and, and everything we've been through, but... Um... Are you kidding? You guys are my best friends. Oh, well... I'm fond of you as well. Uh, but from what we've heard of these Drake Knights, perhaps we shouldn't be gallivanting about shouting our greatness to the whole town. I, I, I just, I don't want anything bad to happen to you, Digsby. Why not? I mean, if they know about us, then they'll steer clear, won't they? Well, <laughs> I suppose uh, we'll have to wait and see. I suppose you're right. But if we need apples to defeat them again, we can... Go to the general store and, and get the ones I, I sold. All right. So just know that. Noted. Should we see if the rest of the gang is up? They are. I was listening to them through the wall. <laughs> 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 oh, very well. Did you no. know Waltz killed an officer? <laughs> I think he mentioned something about that. And I'll stretch. He killed him with some food. I think he poisoned it. I don't know. I, I highly doubt that. You're right. He's not smart enough for that. Okay, let's go. <laughs> He hops out of the bed and uh, opens the door and just starts pounding on your guys' door. Digsby, screw! Roll call! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we're good. We're up. Uh, meet you downstairs. Sounds good. Come on! And you just hear his voice carrying down the hall. Digsby, screw! <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to the door and do a little knock, but I'll kind of open it up. Morning, fellas. How are you doing? Surprisingly, got some sleep. I don't know if he stopped talking the entire night. Well, uh, glad you got some sleep. What do you think we try to find this Dunadas guy? See if he's down there having coffee with, uh, with Kelling? I, I think that's a grand idea. All right, Ryu, you coming with us? Uh, I look down at my sunburns that had kind of been bothering me, laying on them the whole night, and I say, yes, I'll join you, but I might stop by Toriel's once again and see if she has any ointments for my skin. It's a great idea. So you guys head downstairs? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, so you start walking downstairs. Um, You can tell you guys slept in um, pretty late, just judging by the sun that you can see out the window. And you walk down, and there's not many people in there, maybe like one or two. And then sitting at the bar is a Venara, so a primate-looking humanoid. He has dark fur, but a grayed beard and half moon spectacles his back is hunched over you can tell he's pretty old and he's sitting across from Kelleen the barkeep and they're both just sipping some coffee and he looks and he goes oh yes uh, hello is this Digsby's crew that I've heard so much about and he takes a sip of coffee with a little smirk I'll kind of nod my head uh that, that that's us you must be uh Dunadest that is correct and you are uh I'm Dax this is Ryu that's Waltz uh Jules over here good morning and then I assume you already know Digsby <laughs> yes I know Digsby quite Quite well. He's the best orchardist in all of Nisserine. And he tips his glasses down and kind of gives him a nod. Was orchardist a word? Because <laughs> orchardist is a word. I literally you. Googled, what do you call someone who grows apples? I'll believe. Orchardist. Okay. I just had to check. <laughs> it's wanted, not a natural sounding word, but it is. I wanted, to, I wanted to, the truth to come out before it unfolded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All on its own, you know. Only I get to make up words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, if you say a word with enough confidence, it sounds real. So, orchardist. He goes, do any of you drink coffee? Aye. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. You I've haven't had tried. coffee. Well, then you must try it. And he, uh... Have you have, Jules? Absolutely. Hmm. I mean, I'll try. Sure. And what's of you? Say, uh, Are it's... you, Waltz? I'm willing to try. I'll take one and I'll say, Dax, it's great. It wakes it wakes you up pretty well. It'll wake you up. Oh, God, I could use that right now. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, well, Killeen, do you mind pouring up some more? She goes, of course. And, uh... Pours up some coffee and then slides you each your own mug. I take it's a, a sip. It's a very simple drink, really. It's simply ground beans, but 
Luckily, the climate here permits. I take a sip, immediately spit it out. Oh, oh God, that is bitter. Good <laughs> Lord. I have a feeling that would be a reaction. It's an acquired taste. It's more for effect. And to be honest, I mostly do it for the ritual. And then he takes another sip. So it's more like a medicine? Mm, or? Well, perhaps. It cures tiredness, mm. you could say. Takes another sip. All right, I guess. And then I will just slam it back like I, my cops oh, no. are oh, a oh, shot. Oh, <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> May I have some more? Please? That was scolding hot, by the way. You <laughs> truly are of the dragon. Ah, uh, yeah, that's me. Do you have a patron dragon, by the way? I don't know that I'd say it's a patron, but uh, I mean, Theragun's the is, is is the best one out there, I guess. Oh yes, shame what happened to her. Absolutely. Uh, I I don't want to dwell on that though. I mean, it's 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 a you know it's a bit of a sore subject with us, but you know. Understandable, my friend. We do not need to speak of it. He pats you on the shoulder. An Azerketi. It's been a while oh, since I've seen one. How long has it been? Well, I've been on Nisserine for 20 or so years, and it was certainly before that. Very impressive. I wish I oh. could breathe underwater, let <laughs> me tell you. Takes a sip. I might even swim out of here if I could. Ah, yes. Well, it has its pros and cons, for sure. It would make sense that you haven't seen one of us, though. We don't uh, necessarily get out and about. Most of you are recluse, if I'm correct. That is correct. If only I could see Sidonia. I must say I do miss it. Understandable. And what of our horned friend here? What curse ails you? Yes, for you. At the moment, thirst. And he points at his empty cup. May I please have some more? <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Well, Kil- Kilween, she goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> She's very weirded out by the fact that you chugged your coffee and said you've never had any before and want more. Um, so she pours you up some coffee and slides it over. Yes, this bitterness is a taste I seem to have acquired. Mm-hmm. Well, I've never seen anyone take to coffee so fast before, but we'll just consider it another impressive feat of yours. What did you mean? Well, you uh, tiefly incorrect. Yes. Something in your past uh, haunts you? Curse, perhaps? A tainted bloodline? Forgive my use of the word. I'm unaware of any of these things of which you speak. Well, life is full of mysteries. Another one for the pot. Hmm, indeed. And uh, what of you there? A criminal of Eisenhelm? He's squinting at your branding on your neck. Yeah, you seem to know an awful lot about where all of us have been. Uh, How was that? Well, there was a time where I wasn't stuck on this forsaken island. Traveled quite a bit. I'm a learned man, of course. I studied on Garinar. Have you heard? Uh, No, I don't believe so. Hmm, What a shame. Can uh, can you tell me about it? What is is this Garinos you speak of? uh, Garinar... Means to make another in Dwarvish. Are you familiar with the language? Uh, no, no, yes, not at all, no. Okay, well, all right. Uh, it's simply a university of study, so Norvik. Have you been to Norvik, uh, any of you? Uh, no, um, I, I sure haven't. Neither have I. <laughs> well, no actually, segues nicely to another question of mine. How did you all get here? You know, um, once you said, I mean, you, you mentioned you're a learned man. I was hoping you might have an idea, um... What what do you know about these waypoints, these nodes? You know, everybody has a different name for them. Those points where you travel place to place. Well, node is the correct word, but I know how they work, if that's what you mean. Well, as much as anyone can. Sure. Are you saying you arrived here via node? I believe we all did. That's very curious. Uh, that's... Yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Dracus. Um, I don't know why you would ever go there, but have you? Uh, no, I have not, but I am familiar with sun shards and the like and some of the exports sure. of the planet. Oh, yeah. And you are from Aquaria, I presume, Jules? Yes. You, I, mm-hmm. you mentioned you've been to Sidonia. No, no, I, I wish I have been to Sidonia. Oh, yes. I'm afraid I can't hold my breath quite that long. I suppose <laughs> that's, <laughs> I suppose that's true. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Walt, uh, judging by the brand, uh, Mortifar? Yeah, yeah, Mortifar. And uh, where where are you from originally? I too am from Mortifar, uh, Mandaru. I lived in the jungles originally. Proved a little bit too inquisitive for my group and found my way off world. Studied at Garinar and so on. That's, uh, that's interesting. Have you uh, heard about the current conflict that's going on there in Mortifar? Unfortunately, lad, I've been stranded here for decades. I'm quite out of touch. Most of my knowledge is 
Only good as of 20 years ago. Did you know, uh, you didn't know a guy named Marlo, did you? Can't say I do. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm sure there's plenty of people there. I just know somebody who was, uh, in the same area around that time. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm afraid I did not know him. And, uh, you, Ryu, or where are you from? You're not from Lothal, are you? You are elvish. It's my, would be my first guess. Mm, yes, the ears give it away, don't they? Mm, yes, indeed. And the handsomeness. Uh, sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As I've been told before, at least. I'm not one to mm. brag, but I have been okay. told such yeah. things. <laughs> 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 Who told you that? His mommy. Yeah, mo- mostly my mother. Your mother? <laughs> she goes to a different school. <laughs> she, 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 she lives on a different planet, actually. Yeah. All right. You'll probably never see her. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, Desolus is from where I hail. Oh, my. Another planet I've never been. I'm afraid it's dangerous to travel there, you know, with the Fengdom and all. I cannot recommend it. Yes. But, Dunit asks, you mentioned you are stranded. How so? Well, uh, for one, the nodes here haven't aligned in centuries. It's almost unbelievable that you have all arrived in such a short duration. Hmm. Aligned? Yes. Are you familiar with how nodes work? I can't say that I am. Well, uh... The exact depth and origin of them is, you know, up for debate, but essentially they're landmarks on all of the planets. Some have more, some have less. And when the planets go about their orbits and rotate, they align with nodes on other planets. And in that brief moment, they create a link, a a portal, if you will. Anyone touching the node is transported to the adjacent linked node. So, Dunadest. Yes? Would it be logical or possible that all of our planets lined up with this one at the same exact time. Well, did you all arrive on the node at the exact same time? I suppose we cannot know for sure the exact moment we all arrived here, but it appears that we arrived relatively close together. That in itself is very unlikely, though I'm not an astronomer or one who studies the rotation of the planets. I mean, it all makes logical sense. It's just a highly unlikely event. If I was more an expert in the field, I would almost want to verify that the planets were even aligned at all. It's really impressive. Mm. Hmm. So Dunad asks, the chances of us being able to return to our homes are low because nodes infrequently align, or is it a matter of waiting? Well, if history has been any indicator, it'll be centuries before these nodes are active again. The only way off this island is to sail. Well, I can help out there. Oh, yes. Uh, Are you a sailor of sorts? Uh, yes. I've spent, uh, the majority of my recent time as a pirate. Though I'm not uh, quite sure uh, if I still am. Hmm. That's another what story, though. Oh, yes. Well, he sips his coffee again, says, but yes, uh, that's really the only way off this island. Though that's a obstacle in itself. I put out my cup again, hoping for another refill. My goodness, Kilwin, <laughs> we'll have to make more. I'm on it. Jules, uh... Notice that those that the ships are in disrepair. Is there a story behind that? You, I would imagine that the that when the only means of exit are ships, that those would be maintained. Yes. Well, I'm afraid it's too risky to sail those ships. They haven't been sailed since well the Drake Knight's arrival. That's why they're in mm-hmm. such poor condition. It's far too risky. Speaking of the Drake Knights, everyone seems to be very cautious to unveil too much information about them. What can you tell us? Well, I could tell you more than anyone else on this island, I'm sure. I was there when they arrived. In fact, I played a shameful part in their overtaking of this island. He looks down, and he's clearly troubled and does a big sigh. Um, Killing, who comes out with more coffee, sees him and puts her hand on his shoulder like, it's okay, kind of look, we don't blame you, you didn't know, sort of thing. And he looks at her to be assured and looks back to you all and says, uh, I wouldn't want to bore you with all the details, but do you mind listening to a short tale? Please, Please Lord Dump. <laughs> a Lord Dump. <laughs> um, he says, Just not on the floor. <laughs> well, as I mentioned, I studied on Garinar, learned much of alchemy and magitech, just general invention, of course. I, I was quite ambitious in my youth, so I wanted to leave the university explore more of the world. In my travels, I came across a druid. He looks down. Tell You can tell this is 
he just wishes this never happened and just fate never brought him here. He says his name was Sindor, a rather power-hungry individual in hindsight, but he seemed very brilliant. He had an immense grasp on primal magic, and although I dabble in magic, it's more of the constructs around it, the devices that make it work. I'm not one to channel it myself, per se. It seemed like a natural pairing, if you will, my understanding of artifacts and so on. Anyways, he had heard of my skills and approached me. He, he told me of an idea he had. Uh, well, are any of you familiar with ley lines, perhaps? Would I be familiar with those? Um, I know someone who is. <laughs> uh, Waltz, just roll... Well, I guess all of you roll a wisdom check. Except for you. You don't even have to roll. Heck yeah. What's a five? Nat one. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 19. All right, so Waltz, because you nat one, you happen to look out the window, and Benjamin's just staring there, breathing <laughs> on the window, just fogging it up, and it distracts you way too much. He's like, hey. He's like pressing his hand up against. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here when you're done. <laughs> I'll like, I'll like shoo him away. Like just shoo my hand out. He's got a boom box on his shoulder. <laughs> Dax, you, you have heard of the concept of ley lines. You don't quite understand like what makes them occur, how they work. But your understanding is that they're just concentrated points of immense magical energy that seem to appear at random. And you know that some people seem to know how to do things with them. And that's about all you know. I have heard of ley lines, yes. Yeah, those are the, uh, like, really concentrated magical lines, right? They're kind of random ones. Yes, that was a <laughs> very good definition of it, Dax. Um, yes, they seem to appear at random. Uh, there's many theories behind it. Some believe magic is conscious, has a mind of its own. They appear for a reason, and others think they're merely coincidence. Uh, just the fascination with ley lines is that you can channel them for certain things. Well... Sindor, he wanted to channel a ley line, and he wanted to do something interesting with it. He wanted a device that could harness the power of the ley line and distribute it, sustain it, and create pre-programmed magical spell, if you will. It was very fascinating to me and something I've dabbled in. In fact, I had blueprints of such a device. I called it the Arcanor. If you're interested, it means arcane distributor, but no one likes to say all of that. Anyways, the problem was there was a piece of the equation I was missing. Uh, to create a recursive loop of the magic, you know, make it exist eternally. That was my struggle. I conveyed this to Sindor. Then something interesting happened. He seemed to know the missing piece. He gave me an equation that solved all of my problems. Uh, what was most interesting is he did not understand the equation himself. He had no idea how to apply it, what it meant, uh, and he wouldn't tell me where he got it, but at the time I was too intrigued to question such things. So I agreed to help him make the Arcanor, and I fastened the device using Arcanate. Are you familiar with Arcanate? Sorry, I'm using a lot of words you may or may not know. Uh, no, I don't think I am. Well, it's sort of abundant mineral that exists throughout Keldora. You can program it for various magical things. It has a wide range of effects. Not typically durable, per se, but anyway, that's what I use to channel the Arcanor. Uh, uh, Ryu, do you need more coffee? Uh, you seem to have drinking another one. I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ryu, perhaps uh, you should slow down. Uh, Killing. Uh, Ryu crosses his legs and is kind of looking for a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lad, you can go outside. There is a I facilities for. This oh, is oh. an interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well, I'm glad you're intrigued. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm starting to ramble. Uh, any questions? Do not ask. I can say I am familiar with the power of the ley lines, but perhaps do not understand them to their fullest extent. Ley lines are an important part of a ceremony my clan, my, my former clan, performed in which we awakened our magical abilities by being in the presence of a ley line. Fascinating. I can say that my interaction with one was the last time I had my eyesight, after which I am as I appear now. Uh, excuse me, you attempted to channel a ley line yourself? If that is what was occurring, then I believe so. That is fascinating. Are you some sort of learned wizard, perhaps? My clan attempts to create warriors who are able to channel the energy of the ley line. I, unfortunately failed my awakening ceremony and I'm una unable to use those abilities. I'm sorry to hear that. That is truly fascinating. I mean, anyone who's 
channeled a ley line and lived to tell about it, that's uh, an impressive feat. You should be proud of that, my friend. Hmm. I wish I could feel more fortunate. Well, you are alive. You're in a position to perhaps help this island. Maybe it happened for a reason. Hmm. It must be to have been able to taste this drink. He looks down at his empty cup again. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> uh, I should perhaps warn you, coffee tends to move through the system in uh, undesirable ways. Uh, Ryu farts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's exactly what we needed to break up this lord up, was a fart. I'm so glad that happened. Yeah, I mean, that's what you get when you drink this much coffee as a lore dump this big. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Kilvin, I think we shouldn't indulge this man any longer. <laughs> He's cut off. <laughs> From coffee. Get him out of here. She, like, just made a fresh pot, and she's like, rolls her eyes and goes back. Again, fascinating. Is anyone else sorry, eh? I'm used to... When I speak of such things, I feel like I'm back on Garinar speaking to my fellow scholars. So if I lost any of you, I apologize. Yeah, this uh, this Sindor guy, can you uh, tell me a little bit more about him? Uh, that guy I know that I asked about earlier, he, uh, he's, an old, he's an old friend of mine. He actually uh, told me some stories of, uh, of this fella. Mm, Sindor, he knew him? Uh, yeah, you could say that. It's not surprising. The man makes quite an impression. He is very influential. He had a followers, uh, which eventually became the Drake Knights. They were undesirables, if you will, from uh, all over Keldora. Criminals, uh, exiles, mercenaries, people merely looking for an excuse to adventure. He had the might and his own crew and a ship, and he wanted to set out to find a ley line. He had a very good intuition of magic. He seemed to believe he could find a ley line and wanted to take me to it. At the time, I didn't know much else about him, other than he seemed to be the one that was capable of bringing my Arcanor to life. He says, that's interesting. Uh, honestly, most of the stories I heard about him uh, weren't too good. Well, that rings true with what I've seen since I met him. I think uh, I'm just kind of sitting there. And again, my nervous habit is to take out my dagger, flip it around, clean my nails, that kind of thing. It's a lot of information to take in. So I think I'm mostly just like elbows on my knees, head down, kind of just listening and mulling over a lot of this information. I, I, I don't know that I have any questions in particular. Dunadast, you mentioned the nodes haven't been active for some time. How long was that? Um, well, centuries is my understanding. I don't know all of the nodes' habits and alignments. Uh, I just know that once I arrived here, the citizens seemed to claim they hadn't aligned in centuries, and I haven't seen them align since. I tried my best to study them for a while while I was here, hoping for a way out uh, for all of us, but there's not much to be learned, I'm afraid. It's to the point where even the Drake Knights didn't monitor the nodes. They felt there was no threat of anyone arriving. I don't know if you've recalled the sights you saw when you were there, but uh, the one on the island is overgrown. It's a shame, really. Nodes are revered in most places, but merely an afterthought here. Mm. In the magic that lays over this land, do we know how long that has been active? Well, I'm afraid ever since I helped Sindor... Let's continue. Then he he brought me here. He found a ley line. Villagers were quite helpful, understanding. They knew we were just here for research. Sindor's crew of now Drake Knights led us on an expedition towards the mountain to reach the ley line. I was able to construct the Arcanor. I didn't really know what he was planning. He, he merely said he wanted to test how it worked, to see if he could put the ley line in the Arcanor, and we would uh, figure out later what we wanted to do with it. Uh, I had grand visions. You could perhaps protect an entire town, create perfect health for others, uh, a limited supply of food. Uh, really, the possibilities are endless. I'm afraid I learned he had other plans. You see, he channeled the ley line successfully into the Arcanor, and did something rather unforeseen and odd with it. He transformed this island, creating three distinct regions. One of the Arctic habitat that the people here now call Pagos, the desert uh, habitat that they call Gainmar, and Enoch, which is this one, the only one that is untouched by the magic. It's funny, he really, his whole goal was to 
turn this island into a nursery for drakes. Uh, are you familiar with drakes? Is anyone... Ha! Drakes, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, you scoff? Have you interacted? Yeah, you mean those wannabe dragons? <laughs> yes, I dare say they're quite a notch down, but still quite dangerous. Easier to subdue. Uh, yeah, I'll say. <laughs> yes, you wouldn't find a dragon working for a druid, especially not one of Sindor's like. Far too proud. It's interesting, really. I don't understand why he wanted to do it, but when he created this island, he brought with him these drake eggs. I was unaware that he had them in the ship and used the habitat to sustain the drake. Even more curious, using the Arcanor, he was able to link his power to each of the drakes within the regions, drawing from their innate magical abilities. His power and ability is tied to their very existence. It's fascinating, really. <laughs> Oh, what he could have done with the Arcanor if not something so aggressive and barbaric. Why hasn't anybody revolted against Sindor? Why hasn't anyone revolted? He has all of the drakes under his control and the drake knights. No one here could withstand such power. I'll uh, look around to my to my colleagues with kind of a raised eyebrow. I'll, I'll notice that look and look back to Dunedest and say, perhaps now there are those that would stand up to him. That is why I hoped to speak to you. And then you hear screaming outside and the sound of people like running and um, just a lot of commotion outside and he looks to the window. What do you guys do? I'll look. Oh yeah, I'll uh, scoot. I'll scoot my chair. I, 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 thought, thought, th- I thought you were going to. I thought there was more to that. I'll look. Uh, yeah. no, I'll, I was like, go on. I too I'll will look, look out the window. Um, I'll stand up, fasten, <laughs> like push back my chair, fast. I, chair tips over. I turn towards the window, run to it, and uh, look outside. You see a band of what is clearly more Drake knights rolling into town people are running out of the way you see the boy that was at toriel's when you first arrived is in the grasp of a rat folk drake knight he's holding him by the hair and kind of pushing him along and positions himself in front of the tavern you see eight drake knights plus this rat folk that is holding on to the boy and he has like scaled leather armor and some of the scales of the armor have been replaced with various shimmering different colored scales that aren't leather clearly from something else this rat folk has dark fur and he has silver hairs around his eyes and a little bit of like a fu manchu almost kind of grown out of silver hair around his mouth he says good people of karos yesterday A band of outlaws attacked and killed a patrol squad of your beloved Drake Knights. They were being transported to your fair town by the orchardist, Digsby. I am told this band of murderers consists of an Azaketi, kobold, human, and a horned elf. I'm in a favorable mood today, so I'll give you 30 seconds to bring them to me before I start taking fingers from little Edwin here. Starting now. And that is where we'll end Ah, our session. Edwin! Dang it. Dang. Edwin, no! No! Awesome. Well, we can talk about that in the downtime. There's a lot to digest there. Sorry for the lore dump if you're not into that sort of thing. Hey, If you like Mortals and Portals, you know what you should do? You should give us a good rating or something on the podcast network that you're using. That'll really, really help us out. And you should also check us out on Reddit, Instagram, and Patreon, Mortals and Portals. And as always, I got to give a shout out to my crew, everyone that makes this possible. This is like literally the most successful group project I've ever been in. Uh, Just thank you so much, Joel and Taryn, for your editing. You guys do a great job. Thank you, Adam, for your awesome artwork that I just love staring at. And thank you, Ryan, for the sweet jams you lay down for this awesome podcast. And again, as always, thank you, listener. We love you guys. We really appreciate it. Even if there's only one of you, 
we, we love you. Love you. <laughs> thanks, mom. I love you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ryan's mom. Thanks, She's Ryan's like, mom. what's Pathfinder? This is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> what are they rolling? <laughs> yeah. She's All right. Like talking well. back, she thinks like she's in the. <laughs> yeah. She's like, well, I don't understand. Good job, honey. <laughs> yeah, good job. All right, I'm so proud of you. I guess I'm on the phone with <laughs> Way to Ryan. Kill the Drake night. I mean, yeah. Ryan's in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well. Yeah, hey, and also, if you're a patron, you can hear what we're going to talk about after this episode, which is called Downtime, where we're going to break down that crazy lore dump and just talk about it and all that stuff. So, yeah, check that out if you're interested. And uh, also check it out if you're not interested, because, again, that would really help us out, and we would love that. So, yeah. (laughs) See you next time, mortals. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> Taryn's just like, like what is so happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Taryn, are you okay? <laughs> Sorry, I uh, so there was a. If I could get a quick recap, there's a bug I've been looking for for <laughs> ever that I finally killed. <laughs> Literally since the last time we played this, I saw it pop up and I <laughs> smashed that thing, dude. <laughs> and it like, dude, it freaked me out because it came out of nowhere, scared the <laughs> out of me, dude. And then I was like, okay, right. I'm gonna go get some. I'm gonna go get some ice. Uh, but can I get a quick recap?